On today's Locked On Senators, Ottawa falls 2-0 to the Florida Panthers, and we're going to try to figure out why the Panthers are such an impossible matchup for the Sens. And Elite Prospects came out with their latest mock draft, and it has us debating, does it matter what position the Ottawa Senators draft in the top 10? We'll get into all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1021 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan in the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL. That's code Locked On NHL, and you'll get $20 off your first ticketing purchase. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, and Pilsy, I'm very glad we don't have to see the Florida Panthers anymore because that is a rivalry the same as a hammer versus a nail yeah i mean when you get shut out three out of four games and then the game you don't get shut out you lose in overtime yeah not a whole lot of rivalry there as uh, the big brother matthew chuck continues to just dominate the little brother in brady kachuk and the ottawa senators as sure it's not the blowout six nothing five nothing loss uh that they had seen earlier in the season ross but one nothing, two nothing, five nothing, six nothing. Who who cares? Like I was saying to Jack on the postcast last night, even though it didn't matter and it wouldn't have changed anything, it would have been nice just to get the one goal, two one loss instead of two nothing, just to avoid getting shut out for a third time here. Nonetheless, the Ottawa Senators are not able to beat Anthony Stolarz, and he gets a shutout. He does, and he's having a great year. Future sends goalie, Anthony Stolarz. That's the kind of guy I'm looking at. That's the kind of guy. And Ross, as a hashtag goalie-friendly show, when you can get a shutout and a primary assist, that's a good game for a goalie, as he had an incredible two-line pass to feed Anton Lundell, and then he uh, beats Corpusalo on the breakaway there. So Stolarz, like, nice tendy. Yeah, with goalies over 25 games played, he's played 26. He started 23. So why don't we do goalies with 20 or more starts this year? He and Laurent Brossois in Winnipeg are tied with the highest save percentage in the National Hockey League. Now, they both have something in common. They play behind great goalies in Bobrovsky and Hellbuck, so they get spot starts. I get that. But a 925 save percentage, that would be something special. To see in Ottawa. Now, all that aside, like, yeah, they, they put some good opportunities on net for sure. Power play goes over three, which I didn't like to see. And this Anton Lundell kid just seems to dominate the Sens, eh? I feel yeah. like he scores in every game they play against each other. And really, it's getting, yeah, five, five points in nine games for Anton Lundell against the Sens. And I just don't know what the Senators can do against Florida because in in Ottawa, they got bullied. They got pushed around. We wanted some sort of pushback. The only guys that really gave it, and I'm sure, credit to Zach McEwen stepping up, getting in a fight at the start of the game. Those fights, it felt like a nothing burger fight, like a low energy type fight. The only two guys who I felt kind of like went out of their way to join Brady Kachuk in terms of trying to create some sort of physicality and emotion in the game Ridley Gregg, yep. who went after Mikola, huge hit, crumpled him, and then hung in there. Mikola's got like six inches on him in height, probably 40, don't... 50 pounds. Yeah, and Ridley Gregg's intention was not to get in the fight there. He was just like, I'm going to run you into the boards and that's it. And Mikola was like, well, I'm not going to take this crap all night. If you're going to do this, I'll let everybody else know. If you want to hit me, 
go for it, but I'm throwing down and I'm trying to I'm trying to stop this right now. And that not only work. I mean it was in the first period too, so it was also a situation where if he felt he had to go, he only had to go once, and he's like, okay, well exactly. I got hit hard, but it's also not the biggest guy on the other team, so yep. I'm not you know there's some other the Boko Imama. He picked his spot, and he's like, look, I, I answered now, right? All right? Um, but I would have liked to have seen Boko or someone else kind of give him a better a better go. And then the other guy was Eric Brandstrom was getting in wrestling matches and throwing guys around. Like, why is it that the two smallest senators were the two guys who were the most ferocious or the most engaged physically in that game? Yeah, it's unfortunate. And I think I, I want to give Zach McEwen a bit of benefit of the doubt here. It really seemed like... Like, Noodles on the broadcast showed him and Gadjevic talking before the game. Like, they clearly, they had arranged that this was going to happen. There was going to be a fight. Right, it was a stage fight. I like the fights that have emotion. Like, be mad. They they weren't mad in the fight. They were just doing their job, which credit to them. It's a hard job to do. Neither of us would ever sign up to get our faces caved in. God, no. But that just felt like it was almost like a ring around the rosy. Like, they were, you know, just dancing. And they're like, all right, now let's go down. I don't love staged fights, Ross, but I do I do see the purpose of them sometimes. The issue with this one is those two guys knew they were going to scrap. Like, they had already figured it out. So it was just a matter of time. And Gadjevic jumps McEwen. Like, like, watch the start of that fight again. He jumps him, and he's got his gloves off, and he already has the first punch before Zach McEwen even is really kind of engaged. So at that point... Once you're one punch behind, you're just trying to survive and catch up. And that's what McEwen's doing. And Gadjevic gets like five good haymakers in. And then at that point, you're just done. There's a, there's no there's nothing you can do. So if you're going to do a staged fight, then set the stage. Like it's got to be like Matt or uh, Brady Kachuk and Jacob Truba. You're like, OK, let's lock eyes. Let's each confirm that we want to do this fight, let's throw down the gloves and let's square up and then meet. Like, if you're going to stage a fight, you can't jump a guy like that. And I think that's where Zach McEwen, if you go and watch all his fights on hockeyfight.com, not a lot of victories there. So I'm not saying that that would have uh, resulted in him getting the win, but at least then you get a better opportunity to have a fair fight, in my opinion. Unfortunate. All around. Senators swept the season series by Florida. Now they did get one point, and it was a good, valiant comeback the last time they were in Florida. I believe they were down 2 nothing in that game. Scored twice, Probably. brought sounds it to overtime. Right. It sounds about right. <laughs> um, but look, the, the waves and the tide changed in this battle when the Brady's better chance rang down during a 5-2 Sens win oh, last spring in Ottawa, it ultimately proceeded for that famous, infamous, dare I say, call in to TSN 1050, where Keith Kachuk called the Panthers soft, said they should play more like Ottawa. Well, the two teams have met five times since, and oh yeah, in between, Florida went to the Stanley Cup final. In those five games where the Senators have faced off against the Florida Panthers, the soft Florida Panthers, I didn't uh, put in the penalty minutes. I'm sure that they are outrageous on yeah. both sides. The Senators are 0-4-1 while being outscored 23-4 to and shut out three of those five games. It is not even close. It's men versus boys. It's competitors versus pretenders. I feel like that would even imply that they had a chance They're They are just not a good hockey team right now. It's unfortunate, but we're going to turn this into a positive in a minute here with the draft coverage and how Ottawa is going to get a very elite talent. We believe in the top 10. Now what positions are going to be? That's up for debate. But, Pelzi, do you want to wrap up this Panther series? Because I think that stat just kind of does it all justice that it's it's not e- – these teams shouldn't even be in the same league when they're on the ice together. Yeah, I mean, uh, demotion or relegation uh, w- would be an appropriate uh, way to look at this. The Ottawa Senators are – The Panthers are have there. a – the Panthers have a plus 19 goal differential in their last five games against Ottawa. Yeah, it's, it's insane. 19. And it's crazy, Ross, because – the Brady Kachuk Ottawa Senators are the little brother 
to the Matthew Chuck Florida Panthers. But Ottawa's next opponent is kind of the big brother to the Florida Panthers in the Tampa Bay Lightning is kind of the big brother there. So you're going from, I don't know, I guess you're going from playing the middle child brother in the Panthers. Now you're going up against the big brother in the Tampa Bay Lightning in their next game down in Florida. So we'll see if that goes any better for them here. Full game day preview tomorrow. How did the Tampa Bay Lightning bolt their way up the standings? We'll get into that tomorrow. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, wherever you get your podcasts, and help us out with a follow on Twitter at Send Central, Locked on Dot Senators on Instagram. We've been seeing a few more of the reviews on Apple Podcasts. Those go a long way to helping the show grow. We are gearing up for draft coverage and into the offseason where there will be plenty of changes in Ottawa. But could there be playoff hockey in the organization? The Belleville Senators in their final stretch. We'll preview that game in the final segment, but on the other side, reaction to Elite Prospects most recent mock draft. It's a full first round mock draft, so we've got two Senators picks to deliberate on. That's next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Indeed. Do you guys know with Indeed, you can start hiring fast? Because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one simple place. Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have job requirements or else you don't pay. It's that simple. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, just get one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed makes it easy to hire great talent. According to Comscore, Indeed is the number one job site worldwide. And Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest 2019. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. Go visit the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. The bar obviously has a full supply of everything you need for a great night. I'm talking awesome food, great drinks, and the atmosphere to match. I'm talking about events where you have live music, trivia nights. They also, I love this, the Arsenal Supporter Bar, those soccer hooligans, they get involved, or should I say football, and they make sure the pub is bouncing on the weekend in the early a.m. You can find their event schedule online on their website, GleepCentralPub.com. You can also find them on social media at Gleep Central Pub on Instagram, where they're updating all the time about what's going on at the pub on Bank Street. You can also get their Send Shuttle. Just one home game remaining. The Senators Shuttle leaves from the from the bar an hour and 15 minutes before the game and will bring you right back afterwards. Sue knows all the back roads in Ottawa. She will make sure to get you all there all the time, safe and sound. So make sure you grab your tickets online, GlebeCentralPub.com. And it's only $17. So get your tickets online. $17 round trip. Sends Habs this Saturday. Pilsy and I will be boots on the ground. Go visit. The Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street, and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. The vibes are free at the GCP. All right, Pilsy. It is a game day for the Belleville Senators, and I'm excited to get into a conversation about them a little later on, but we are all in on the draft. If you've been a longtime follower of Locked On Senators, you know that the only thing a bad team can sell you is hope, and there's no more hopeful time than the National Hockey League draft. Pilsy's been diving in, doing his homework. I've been making my list, checking it twice. And I have to tell you that anywhere in the top 10 is a good place to be in this 2024 draft. Obviously, number one, and I would even argue number two, have separated just a touch. But three to 10, sign me up for a great player. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the nice thing, Ross. I feel like this draft class uh, is a little bit stronger than last year. So you have a little bit more hope that you can really have a franchise-altering player that uh, comes your way if you end up in the top 10. And there's kind of – there's a couple guys at each position, which you could see the Ottawa Senators taking that direction. Now, obviously, the Senators have a lot of left-hand shot defensemen – so that's not a particularly position of need. However, Ross, we've been looking and there are some left-hand shot defensemen where you're like, okay, we know we don't need these guys, but they're so good if they're available for the Sens, you just draft them and figure out how to get them in the lineup later on and you can move other players because the Ottawa Senators desperately need to improve their prospect pipeline and Although a right-hand shot defenseman is their top priority, you can't be reaching on a guy just to get the position you like and leaving good talent on the board. So as frustrating and painful as it is to even comprehend the idea of the Sens not walking away with this uh, top pick, top 10 pick, without a right-hand shot defenseman, you got to have an open mind and and, uh, decide, look, we have to take the best player available. And it's going to be the first draft selection from this new regime running things in Ottawa. It's their first real chance to have their guy. And that doesn't, it doesn't scare me, but it's going to be extremely interesting because I think we're going to learn the prototype of what the senators are looking for. Not only with that pick in the top 10, but also the Boston pick that's going to be at the end of the first round where maybe they take a swing on upside. Like we haven't seen in the past where Ottawa really kind of goes with guys who have high floors where you kind of know that they're going to be pros, they're athletic kids, but what's the upside? Can they be game changers? And some have become game changers for sure at the NHL level, but it's a matter more so of getting guys who can pop off. And I think that we, we might see that here with, with this, because we talked to Dave Poulin for our thousandth episode and he was talking about hockey sense And character. Those are the top two. I think every team in the league will tell you character is important to them. But hockey sense is what we're going to be looking for. Who thinks the game at an elite level? And I think elite prospects nailed it when they're talking about a guy who thinks the game at an elite level. But they also hear with their most recent mock draft. It's mock draft 2.0. Credit to Cam Robinson doing the article and EP ringside. It's worth the price of admission, even just to get onto elite prospects website. I think it's like 12 bucks a month, something like that, but you're able to get all the game logs, everything, lots of articles, lots of insight. So huge, huge um, asset, especially come draft time. He did one spin Pilsy on the tankathon, and it gives Ottawa worst case scenario. Since fans are worse to use used to worst case scenario. Yeah. So they are drafting ninth here. If they draft ninth, does that change from if they draft fifth for you in terms of drafting for positional need? Or are you no matter where they are, you're just taking whoever you think has the highest upside going forward? Well, it changes in the fact, Ross, that the circumstances will kind of dictate what the Sens can do. If you're picking ninth as opposed to seventh, sixth or fifth there's just less players available so you have less opportunities to go different directions i i think if they're fifth and a guy like zane Perrick is available there's not many players at least from the research i've done so far that would entice me to take a a different position rather than zane Perrick. i I think he's probably one of the the top talent guys at that level depending on who gets picked before him so i think that early in the draft I still would lean heavily to Perrick and right-hand uh, shot defenseman, depending on what's going on with Lev Shunov as well. Um, but later on in the draft, if those guys aren't available, y- you can't be reaching on the next right-hand shot defenseman, pr- most likely going to be Carter Yakemchuk. Uh, that's kind of in the 15 to 10 range. I wouldn't reach on him just to get your position and leave good talent. Uh, like there's a couple players. I don't know what uh, direction you want to start this off with, but there's like, two or three guys that I I would certainly think are a better best player available ranking than just going for that right-hand shot defenseman. 
So we've teased a ton, and Cam Robinson has Sam Dickinson, a left-shot defenseman, going to Ottawa at ninth overall. And I just think there's going to be a collective meltdown, just the fact that it's a left-shot defenseman, not understanding that, hey, he's probably going back to London next year. The year after that, I mean, there's so many uncertainties in in the Ottawa Senators' left-shot side. There's a ton of them right now. But things can change in a hurry. The only guy who I think is stapled there for the next decade is Jake Sanderson. So, yeah. look, I, I I think I, there's probably a few guys who I'd prefer. But then you look at, and again, worst case scenario, Ottawa drafting ninth overall. Everyone who really kind of jumps off the page has already been selected because I'm with you. I think that Lev Shunov and, um, and Perrick are my top two guys. Yeah. Then I'd probably be looking for an impact forward beyond that. The Siliev kid, if you're also gonna go with the right shot or left shot defenseman, six foot seven, two ten. Like what's Ottawa been poor at over the last half decade? Defending. Like he would be exactly what you're looking for, kind of a Victor Hedman mold. But if they took Sam Dickinson, I could talk myself into it. When we had Scott Wheeler on for our initial foray into this 2024 draft, he said it's kind he's kind of like this year's Jake Sanderson in a sense. So yep. hey, you like Jake Sanderson, you want to? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's definitely worse things that can happen, Ross. And yeah, this uh, Anton Sileev guy is very interesting. Russian left shot, six foot seven, and he he's plays playing... twenty. He plays twenty minutes a game in the KHL. That's where I was just about oh. to get to. Uh, like he's playing in the KHL, which for a draft eligible guy is impressive. But playing twenty minutes a night, and he started the season off really hot. I believe in his first nine games, he had like six points or something. Now clearly. He's cooled off as 63 games. He's at 11 points. So really the point production has slowed down, but the, the skating for a guy of his size and the, the kind of imposing will he'd be able to put on uh, the best teams forwards going up against him, especially as he gets older and kind of fills out his frame a little more and gets used to playing up against men. That guy could be a really interesting pick as well. So I, I, I feel like I'm leaning regardless, Ross, defenseman. Uh, it seems like, yeah. al- although we thought this was going to be the Sens decor that had been looking the best in years and hopefully would be more complete, it simply hasn't worked out that way. So I really think the Ottawa Senators more likely are going to lean towards drafting a defenseman regardless of left-hand or right-hand shot with their uh, first pick here. I've definitely softened my stance on whether or not they can or should draft a left shot defenseman. I just think wherever you are in the draft, take the best player available. And for the Ottawa senators, they just need talent. And, and the they senators, need a, bad. a, another left shot defenseman who ranked fourth on, um, on Craig buttons, most recent rankings, Zeev Booyam, university of Denver. If you're a hockey fan, you want to watch him play tonight. It is the Frozen Four, tomorrow rather, Thursday, the Frozen Four in St. Paul in the XL Energy Center. We probably still have some of those, uh, some of the beers to be spilt on the floor um, in that building still there. No, but all jokes aside, I think that you're looking at at a couple guys who are going to be first rounders in the Frozen Four. Obviously, Macklin Celebrini, the first overall pick expected he'll be in there with Boston University you got Boston College in there uh Denver and Michigan those are the four teams remaining so it's gonna be a ton of a ton of fun I'll be watching that I will also be watching the Belleville Sens. so on the other side we will get to Belleville and I will let you know who Craig Robinson Cam Robinson rather sorry about that Craig Robinson's the guy from uh, the office isn't it yeah Daryl nice I should have said from eastbound and down too <laughs> Amazing. Cam Robinson, who does he have the sense taking at the end of the first round? We'll have that conversation and more. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Look, if you guys want to head to the Frozen Four, like Ross is talking about, or you want to head to any of the remaining Ottawa Senators games, hopefully we get to see as many Sens fans at the home closer versus the Habs as possible. You can do it all with Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy your tickets to your next big event because Game Time... Oh, go ahead, Ross. I was going to say, get your tickets for the Frozen Four tonight, the semifinals. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are tickets for both games. 
Okay, These are tickets it. to get into the stadium for tonight, both games. I mean, you're looking at all in pricing, 66 US dollars, and that's before code locked on NHL. That's awesome. Hey, well, if you want to scout some of the future players in the NHL, the Frozen Four is the best way to do that. So check it out with game time. And it's not just sports, guys. Music, comedy, theater. You can find all of that with killer last-minute deals, all-in pricing, views from your seat, and a best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's the only app where you can see the view from your seat before you buy. All-in prices are so nice. You hate thinking you got a deal, then you get to check out, and it's double the price because of all these hidden fees. And you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Two taps, boom, tickets are on your phone. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, Game Time guaranteed. All right, Pilsy. Back to our conversation on the 2024 NHL Draft. There'll be plenty more of that on our channel over the course of the next two months. We are going to be doing a top 80, 8-0 prospects. We are going to be dialed in, and then we will be at the draft in the Sphere in Las Vegas on Canada Day weekend. So mock drafts are going to be coming frantically, I'm sure, over the course of the next while. We will do one after the lottery and one right before the draft with special guests like we've been doing now for the last two seasons. They are our, our third moments. feature film, Ross, the trilogy to the mock draft. What our first one I know was four hours, right? Well, I can easily find and then it. The second are... one was three and a bit. The The first one was three hours and 52 minutes. Okay. So right around the four hours. second one was five hours and 24 well, the minutes. Second one was more. Wow. Okay. Five hours and 24 minutes with five. Special guests. We'll get all of our favorite draft analysts back on the show. It's always a great way to kind of put a cap on all of our draft profiles. And it also, at that point, we have a knowledge base because we don't pretend to be scouts in the sense of being at the game and watching every shift of these players. But we rely on our seven scouts that we use for our rankings and a few friends of the show who follow specific areas to help us out with the NHL draft. A reminder that last year, 29 of our top 32 went in the first round. Bob McKenzie had 28. So guess we're taking the Bob father spot right at the top of the hill. All jokes aside, though, uh, Cam Robinson EP does a great job. Elite prospects. Obviously, we're using their rankings as a part of ours. So he's got the Ottawa Senators taking Sam Dickinson in the first round. And then with their second pick, Luke Misa of the Mississauga Steelheads. Now, he had 81 points in 66 games this year. I don't know what this means. He says the hockey men aren't in love with Luke Misa. Don't know what that means. You? I don't know. I I guess like if I, if I had to just assume what he's saying, he's like the old school guys that care about size and strength Mm. and and grit and things. Cause Misa is listed at 5'10", 165 pounds. That's got to be it, but still fights through checks. Apparently we'll learn more about Luke Misa going forward, but I would not be surprised if the Senators do use the OHL as a draft pipeline this year, not only Michael Anlauer owning Brant for Bulldogs, but also Rocco Tulio, one of his partners, owns the Oshawa Generals. I believe the Windsor Spitfires owner is also a part of the um, the the pitching in, if uh, lack of a better term, or the investment in the Ottawa Senators. So I'm curious to see how that all plays out for Ottawa. Well, and Ross, especially after we've been very used to the Ottawa Senators pipeline being North Dakota. There's and, one node accent. There's two node accents that I need this draft. And, and uh, the USNDTP, right? Like those Ooh. were, that's where the Ottawa Senators were really getting a lot of their talent from. And Ross, we talked about it. And if you're looking at uh, EP's mock draft here, uh, Luke Misa is who the Sens drafted 29th, drafted at 31st by the Dallas Stars, right shot defenseman EJ Emery. That would be a guy that would be a nice uh, addition to the Sens prospect pool. U.S. national team program defenseman, North Dakota next season. And, oh, yeah, 
he's Canadian too. Oh. He's a dual citizen, so he's a Vancouver Surrey love guy. It. We know our guys at Locked On Canucks will love the little Surrey shout out as well. But I would love to have EJ Emery on the team. Uh, we Chris Peters, another guy we use his scouting. He's yeah. with Flow Hockey. He uh, he compares him to Keandre Miller in terms of the raw skating ability. But guess what? EJ Emery, right shot defenseman. So Huge. there's something to keep in our back pockets as we approach the draft. Um, the second round, he continues and has Tanner Howe going to the Ottawa Senators, a uh, WHL player with the Regina Path. So that's how Elite Prospects draft ranking or draft mock shakes out so far. Plenty of time to change things as playoffs are underway. And I mean, this Frozen Four this weekend, I'm super excited about. I think it's great hockey. And um, I'm going to say that Boston University gets it done. Macklin Celebrini is going to have a big tournament there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not about to doubt uh, Macklin Celebrini, so I'll hop on that with you, Ross. Okay, hop on the wagon. I'll go check yeah. him out at FanDuel, have some fun with that. Belleville tonight, they've been very, Ooh. very good to my pockets as I've had them in each of the last two games. I was responsibly nice. all in two games ago, and then I even admitted I was irresponsibly all in last game but they came through huge performances loved seeing kevin mandalazy get his first pro shutout on the friday game and now they've put themselves in a position where if they can win their fourth straight game and beat the toronto marlies tonight they're using one of their games in hand they are the only uh team in the division those two that are playing tonight and they each have yep. this is their game in hand there's six games left in the season. Laval only has four, and they're the separating team between the Marlies and Senators. We need a regulation win tonight, buddy. We need to get to within one point of the Marlies because I'm not satisfied with being fifth and just sneaking nice. into the playoffs. I want this Belleville team to finish in fourth place in the division. Heck, why don't... No, we won't get crazy. Just Okay, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. But Cleveland's only got three wins in their last 10 games. They're holding down the third spot right now. But that's unrealistic nope. with only 12 points available for Belleville. Let's get to number four, though. But, Ross, it's especially unrealistic because the Laval Rocket next game is up against the Cleveland Monsters. So we want uh, the Cleveland Monsters to win that game and get two more points. Very well said. Um, give me a locked-on player tonight. Who's going to step up for the Belleville Sens? <sighs> They're going to need a handful of guys to step up, Ross, because... The Toronto Marlies, like that, everyone knows this is a team where they have an infinite bankroll. And future Sens head coach John Gruden. Yeah, yeah. And former Belleville Senators cap. Yeah, he was captain, right? Logan Shaw for the one yes. season. Yep. And he, Logan Shaw is still lighting it up. They have a bunch of guys on their squad that uh, are top tier AHLers like Kiefer Bellows. That's another guy there. So the Ottawa Senators had some guys like that. But they're, they're not around. Unfortunately, Angus Crookshank injured. Uh, Zach McEwen, say what you want about him, but he is a good AHL player. We've seen that in the small sample size he has down there. Boko Imama, obviously not a point getter, but he's a guy you, you, that uh, they've invested a lot in and you'd want him in Belleville for this. He's not going to be there as well. Thankfully, Tyler Clevin is down there, but these rosters are very, uh, very mixed matched here mismatched maybe that's the word i was looking for because the marlies have a big edge here and it's gonna be in coca-cola coliseum as well so i and i believe ross that nhl network is picking this game up like this is Ooh. a big game move move over vegas versus edmonton we got the biggest hockey game of the night oh, belleville yeah. versus the toronto marlies um i'm gonna go with garrett pilon because he's been playing some PLC. great hockey of late Hey, he was a huge reason why Belleville was able to get those back-to-back -back wins last weekend. Had two goals on Saturday against Syracuse and an assist on Friday against Springfield. So I think Peelzy's just been buzzing along here. These veteran guys that we talked about last summer need to make a difference and help Belleville out. That's Big what Peelzy's doing. I'm expecting him to play well tonight, too. So I'm going to go with my locked-on player, Ross, is going to be who's ever in net. Uh, the Senators are probably going to need one of their goalies, our guys, Kevin Mandelazy coming off a shutout, and Mad Sogard coming off a big win. Whoever is playing in net tonight? It's going to be Marilinen now. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, you're right. That's exactly what I'm setting this up to happen. 
even if it's Levy Marilinen, I'm down for that. But I need them to basically steal the game. Like they have to be the Belleville Senators number one player. Yeah, well, they've all had good seasons. Um, 906 save percentage for Marilinen and Mandalazy in 21 and 22 games, respectfully. And um, Mads, if he does play tonight, will be his 30th game of the year. He's got a 915 save percentage. So that's really yep. nice to see for Mads down there. We'll be watching, we'll be following tonight um, on Twitter at Send Central. You can find us on Instagram as well, lockedon.senators. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts for me, Ross, and uh, we're going to have to to hear more about this, but our guy, Alex Adams, he tweets out that Mark Mathot is at PWHL Ottawa's practice leading a body checking clinic, and there's a video of Meth on the ice there. So we got to talk to Meth about this and get the scoop on uh, on him being a, a body checker checking uh, teacher to PWHL Ottawa. I was expecting him more to be a bodybuilder the way that guy takes care of himself. That's hilarious. We got we got to get the background on that, and we need yeah. hey, we need to learn ourselves. We're we're men's league heroes too. We need to learn how to brace ourselves and get get <laughs> get bang in the body a little bit. I, yeah, well, I, got a, I got a nice shiner to to go with my beer league. Oh boy, there it is. There you go. That's for everyone <laughs> watching on YouTube. Like, subscribe. Appreciate everybody for following the show. And and this got the juices flowing for me for the NHL draft. Like th- there's yep. no better time despite, you know, how tough it's been um, for, for the Ottawa senators on the ice this season. Very disappointing. And I don't know if you saw the senators goaltending has most affected them versus any team in the league. Not that that's super Definitely. surprising. Their expected points versus what they actually have. Uh, 16 more points is allegedly what the Sens goalies have costed them. All right, instead of a final thought, what I'm going to start doing at the end of the show is just a quick Sens stat. I'm just going to go and randomly pick an all-time stat, whether it's water cooler fodder or whatever the case may be. Today, now, this is obviously just since the NHL started tracking hits, um, but it's based on Brady Kachuk getting 16 in just one game. The Ottawa Senators' top three hits leaders all-time. Brady Kachuk, 15-15. Pretty impressive. Mark Borowiecki has 1576. Also pretty impressive. Uh, Chris Neal has almost a thousand hits more than anybody else in Senators history. Wow. 2,568 hits. He's also got 2,522 penalty minutes. And you may also know that he has never been suspended. I also bring that up because I feel like we had a quick conversation on the fighting at the start of the game, and maybe Ottawa hasn't been good at winning fights. Mm. And I blame Chris Neal, Brian McGratton, Rob Ray, the Ottawa Senators, You and maybe Rob Ray I'm throwing in. He was the senator for a quick minute. Matt Karkner, you could say as well. The Senators used to have mutants. Like yep. The Senators would have the toughest guys in the league. So maybe this is just what normal fighting is. You win some, you lose some. And even Brady was so good early in his career. And now he's, you know, maybe not picking his spots as much. He hasn't fought in a little while, which I actually like to see. But, uh, yeah, we were spoiled when Chris Neal and Brian McGratton would win oh. every single fight. Toss in Ray Emery in that mix, too. I mean, geez. Yeah, really is. All right. There you have it. Let us know in the comments who you think the Senators should draft. Not who. It can. But I want to know what position. Do you care? Will there be a meltdown? If it's a left shot defenseman, that's the question of the day yeah. that I want answered. For today, we say goodbye. Thanks so much for listening, watching, being a part of the show. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators Podcast. It's your team every day.